if they have them on the SATs or not, but a little bit more difficult than what we've been over. So you see we're mixing to get mixing different percents of solution. So I want to get a 10% solution and a 60% solution, mix them together, and end up with a 30% solution, but I got to have 50 milliliters of it. Makes your head spin when you read it. All right. So what we're literally going to do is make visual containers up here and mix them together. So here you go. Here's my first container of solution plus my second container of solution. Mix them together. And here's my result solution. You guys are going to help me fill in what should go in there. Tell me something about the first solution I got to put in. It's got to be 10%, right? So in this first little container is going to be 10%. Do we know how much of that we got to put in? No. no, we're trying to find that. So guess what I'm going to put underneath it? I don't know, variable. I don't know how much 10%. That's what we're being asked. What do we got to mix the 10% with? What other type of solution? 60. So guess what's going to go in the second container? 60%. Do I know how much of that solution I need? No, but I'm not assuming it's the same as the 10%. So here comes a different variable. Why? So this is the amount of 10%, the amount of 60%. Boom, put them together. What's the result? What type of solution do I need for the result? 30%, but no need for a third variable. Why not? I know how many milliliters I need, so I'm going to plop a 50 right underneath that. 50 milliliters of 30%. We all write on the visual before we get to the equations, because the equations are sitting there staring in the face. I just got to help you out. Equation number one, total amount of solution. X plus Y, what's the total amount I need? 50 milliliters. There's your first solution. I mean, there's your first equation, excuse me. However many milliliters of each, they got a total 50. Second one, now you apply the percents. All right, now we'll apply the percents. Oh, we're better than this, though. Point. Yeah, we don't put in percents. We put in the decimal version. So I'm actually going to put in 0 0.10x, 10%, plus 0 0.60, or 0 0.6, I like to put the 0 in, y, be careful now. I always see students forget this part. They Look, they multiply the percent times how much they have. Percent times how much they have. Do the darn thing again. Percent. Point three zero times how much you're going to have. Yeah. So multiply it by 50. So there are your two equations now. X plus Y equals how much I have, 50, and then I apply the percents with it. My recommendation, uh, how about you do 0 0.30 times 50 so I can clean that up. So it should be 0 0.10X plus 0 0.60Y equal to, what's that again, 15? Is it 15? Okay, so there's my new equation all cleaned up. The only thing that's different from what we've done the last two days, one of them has a decimal. They have decimal. Okay, sorry. Take your time now. Go to x plus y equals 50. What can, remember, you want to eliminate the x's or the y's, your choice. What can I multiply that first equation by so the x's are gone? Negative 0.10. If you want to eliminate the y's, you do negative 0.60. Whatever floats your boat. I'll keep negative point. One zero. And all I'm asking, guys, is you slow down right neatly because now you're dealing with decimals. So distribute. I got negative 0.10x. Keep distributing. Negative 1.0y equals 
Again, distribute across to the 50. 50 times negative 0.1, 0. Negative 5. There go my x's. Use your calculator. 0 0.60 minus 0 0.10. I get 0.50y equals 10. And then you guys are good from here. Divide both sides by 0 0.50. What was Y? That was our, so how much six of the 60% solution are we going to have? We should have 20 milliliters yep, of the 60%. And then how about of the 10%? How do we go back and figure that out? There really is not too much to do, right? You know, they have to add to 50, but I'll still write it out. So how much of the 10%? 30 milliliters. So anytime we're gonna mix them here, just like we will in the next one too, I wanna to make, I wanna see these containers drawn out because they show you literally what the two equations should be. Anything you wanna ask? One doesn't make you great, we got another one, but anything you wanna ask? Sarah. Because that's how much I had. 0 0.10 times how much I had. Yeah. 0 0.60 times how much I had. 0 0.30 times how much I had. I knew I had 50, I needed 50 at the end. Okay. Here, I don't know how much I had. That's why I multiplied them by X and Y. Good. Other questions? All right. Let's get away from the percents now and deal with money in these. All right, so it looks like we're gonna mix teas together. Some tea drinkers in the house here. Tea drinkers? Yes. Wait, I don't get why we did that. I just like that. Did what? Because I'm, I'm, I'm taking whatever is in this one, mixing it with whatever's in this one, and this is my final solution. Tell me something about the first tea. Six dollars a pound. So in the first one's gonna go six dollars. Do I know how much how many pounds of that I have? That's what my job is. X. What are we mixing that with? Eight dollars per pound. That'll I don't know how much. Why? But I do know when I put the two together, I have this new T that's worth seven hundred. Yeah, seven. Seven dollars and fifty cents. And I have one hundred and forty-four pounds of it. All right, here we go. First equation. X plus Y equals 144 pounds. I know both T's have to add to 144 pounds. Unlike last problem, you don't apply the percent, we apply the money now. Yep. So like the reason it's X and Y without the variables is because like the money stays with money. Correct. And the pounds stays with pounds. There you go. Yep. Now I'm telling you that $6 a pound plus $8 a pound now, what am I going to do on the right side? 750 for 144 pounds. I can tell you how much that'll cost. A lot. Clean it up. That'll be 1,000. Nope. 1,080. All right, here we go. Back again, last two days. You can multiply the top equation by negative six or negative eight. Make a decision and let's go. Negative six. Wait. 
I have no idea. Negative eight sixty four. We're going to need a lot of that eight dollar tea. Yeah. Looks like we're going to need one hundred and eight pounds of it. And then go ahead, plug it back in. How much of the six dollar tea are we going to need? Anything for these mixture ones before we get to motion? Any questions on the mixture? How we're getting there? And I'm not, I'm not going to be tricky and try to change these up. This is how they are. This is how it will be on the quiz and your practice tomorrow. What? Your practice tomorrow oh. and the quiz on Monday. Yeah. Maybe, oh yeah, that's right, you weren't here when I said that. Oh, no, I was sorry. running sorry. from PE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're yeah. Far from PE. Next up, these motion problems now. How about this, huh? I got a plane going with the wind, travels 450 miles in three hours, and then it goes against it. Same distance, but now it takes five hours. What was the plane speed and the wind speed? All right, here we go. Well, first, variables. Let's get very, I'm not doing containers here. We're not mixing anything. Variables. P, W. Plane speed. I'm sure it's all the drama happened outside of class is great, but shut it, please. Wind speed. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this formula, if you've ever used it before. D equals R times T. Distance equals rate times time. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe not. That's basically how I'm going to get both equations here. Right. Rate. Distance equals rate times time. That's how I'm going to create these equations. So first, let's talk. Going with the wind, with the wind. How far am I going distance wise? Okay, so here we go. Here's my first equation. The distance, 450 equals, now here we go. So let me slow it down so I can talk about the rate. That's really what you're trying to find here is the rate. But see how it's going with the wind? So I need to take the plane speed and add it because it's going with the wind to the wind speed. That's my rate right there. The plane speed plus the wind speed. That's the rate I'm going at. Times, what's the time here? How long is it taking me to go 450? Three hours. Yeah. Times three. So there's my distance, rate, and time. Okay. When I go against the wind, there's going to be one slight adjustment here. What's the distance I'm still going against the wind? It's the same distance, it says, right? Same distance, 450. But now it's taking me how many hours? Five. Five, and everyone ready for the slight adjustment? When you go against the wind, you got to take that away from the plane speed. So I subtract it when I go against it. Because I'm going the plane speed, and then you got the wind. Remember, we're going against it; they're coming towards each other. So the plane speed is not actually going that fast. I got to subtract off the wind from it. Okay. All right, we got to clean that up. That's gross. Right? Can we distribute the three and the five? And I don't know about you, but I don't like the four fifty on that side. That gives me creeps. 
3P plus 3W equals 450 on this side. I just like it on the right. That's what we're all used to. And then 5P minus 5W equals 450. And something new comes up now that we got to discuss. Has not happened in the last two days. Can I cancel something out right away? No. All right, here's what we usually did. Oh, I'll just take one equation, multiply it by a number, we're gone. I don't think I can multiply three by anything to cancel out 5P. And I wanna stay away from fractions. So I can't multiply this equation just by a single number, but factor, no factor. Common, no common factor. Like, or I don't know if that's even the right word. But Why not multiply both, the, both the, equations by numbers? We so we can't get away with doing what we did the last two problems, which is multiplying by just a single number. So yeah, it's going to happen here. We got to multiply by but two different numbers so they cancel out. Suggestions? On what I can multiply by each. So let's say the P's cancel out. Five, five, five. All right, whoa! I heard five up top. That gives me 15 P. Negative three. Negative three on the bottom. That'll give me negative 15 P and they'll cancel. Fine. One of many suggestions you could have gave me. Not just the only one. One of many. All right, let's take our time now. So I'll have uh, 15 P plus 9w equals, oh boy, crap. Five, I don't know, I'm just looking for five times 450 here. I, I don't know, I don't know. I, okay, relax everyone, all right, relax. Yep, soak it in, I made a mistake. Yep, great, yep, mark it down. Even the great ones. Yep. There you go. Why are you even qualified to teach this class? I know. Yep. All right. Can I finally get 450 times 5? Thank you. Let's see if I can do this next one here. Negative 15P minus plus 15W. Negative, negative, negative. Negative. Is it positive? You're not going to get me again. No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, you're done. Negative. You're done. negative. negative. <laughs> All right. Anyways. What are those numbers that are coming out of your mouth? <laughs> what is it? No way. Negative three times 14, 450. 1,000, I'm to forget it. I just, you want something done, do it yourself. Whew, that was painful. All right, if we finally got the P's to cancel, great. 30W. Equals, I'm not even going to bother. Nine hundred. So the wind is going a solid thirty miles an hour. And then how about the wind speed now? I have the plane speed, excuse me. So go back, 3P plus 3W equals 5, 450. Plug in your 30. And then let's go to work. Oh, you got buck 20? Yeah. 
Anything from you guys before we do one more motion problem here? I'm good. All right, we could do this in the air or we can do it in the water. All right, we can also go in the water and talk about this. Instead of uh, going against the wind, we can go against the current. So you guys could see you row 24 miles in three hours, great. But you go against the current, you can only row two thirds of that distance in four hours. Find your rowing velocity and the current velocity. All right. So ready, I'll go R. Again, pick your own variables. R is going to be my rowing speed. Rowing velocity, same thing, rowing speed. And I'll put the C as speed of the current. I don't want to put current speed. That doesn't sound right. Or water, if you want to put water instead. And again, I'm trying to use distance equals rate times time here. All right, let's talk about with the current. Three hours. Distance, distance. 24. 24. Can you just do it the opposite since you yep. have to use the generators? 24 equals, what's my rate going to be here if I'm going with the current? Keep with the current now. For me anyway, R plus C, right? I add them together. Times how many hours? Three, no problem. All right, let's see if anybody catches this next one. So now we go against the current, but I can only row two thirds of my distance. So I'm not gonna put 24 again, All right? Can't put 24 there. It's not the same distance like the last one. It's only two thirds of that distance, which would be two thirds of 16 or two thirds of 24. It's 16. Ah, you got that, Maddie? Yeah, you get Again, that's two thirds of 24 right there. How long does that take me? Four hours. Four hours in time and my rate, since I'm going against it, R minus C. R minus C. All right, clean it up and go. I'm not gonna do this one for you. Three R plus 3C equals 24, 4R minus 4C equals 16. Go ahead, get after it. This looks like another one where I'm gonna to have to multiply by two different numbers. I'm just going to put the final answer in there.
Should end up with your rowing speed of six miles per hour and your uh, water speed at two miles per hour. Okay, practice tomorrow. Where's Monday? Quiz Friday, sorry. Friday, Friday, Friday. Friday. Quiz Friday, practice tomorrow. Yeah, Clementine.